This is Time of the Night Watchman. Time of the Night Watch time. Commentary information, Bible, prophecy, and stuff. And yes, think not we come Lord came to bring peace on this earth. He came giving us a sword. That seems to be my kind of like one of my mantra scriptures for some reason. It just puts it all in perspective for me. And in light of that scripture and what's going on and what's coming, well, this is out there for those who have the ears to hear. So our discussion today is be basically is war. Yeah, we've we've been on this. This is the second time around, I guess you would say. But this is the mindset. You have to have a certain mindset for all those kind of things. And clearly, war is not new to the things of God. Yeah, I know. God's a God of love. Love, love, love. Well, you know, that misplaced love, which God, is, everybody keeps on talking about, is just that. It's A lot of times, it's just misplaced. So God is also a God of war. And we're going to discuss God and how he plays out when it comes to things of war. We, of course, go into the into the Torah and talk about the, the laws pertaining to war, and there are laws, and that's for you to read and study for yourself to make sure you're in the right mindset. And that's basically the key thing, having a mind for war. And, and, and clearly, even in the book of Ephesians 6, 12, for we are not struggling against human beings, but against the rulers, authorities, and cosmic powers governing this darkness against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realm. So clearly there is room for war. And does that war get physical? Well, just based on the previous caption, and even what the Bible talks about, yeah, it can get quite physical. But behind all that physicalness is this spiritual. And we got to recognize the reality thereof. You know, you have those people, it, 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 we were just talking about this with my wife the other time, but there are those people who are, who are cup is half full versus those that are half empty. Uh, the half empty will say, well, you know, you may die. You, this They always tell you the negative. Uh, whereas the people who are more half full is so like, well, what makes you think that's going to happen? What if I manage to get through this? And it's by my own convictions anyway. And if I do die, praise God and pass the ammo. See, remember, the scripture says, the Lord does not give us a spirit of fear, but a power of love and sound mind. That in tow, the, 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 the fear of death is also gone. Oh, death, where is thy sting? Oh, grave, where is thy victory? The bottom line is serving God. And I think that's the ultimate thing about loving God. You, you want to do for God in order to please him. Not to please your neighbor, not to please your friends, not to please your family, not to please your government even. It's to please him, the almighty God through Jesus Christ. And you'll find that goes totally counter against this this well-to-do culture we're living in. Let's all get along. Well, the truth of the matter is, even the Bible teaches, we all do not get along. There is a distinction, and this is what I've been addressing, between good and evil, right from wrong. So at this point, we're just picking, talking to those people out there who are having or struggling with having the mind for war. All right, so let's go there. All right, in Psalm 1834, 33, depending on which Bible you're reading out of, uh, he makes me swift, sure-footed as a deer, and enables me to stand on my high places. He trains my hands for war until my arms can bend a bow of bronze. You give me your shield, which is salvation. Your right hand holds me up. Your humility makes me great. So, again, even in the psalmist here, God has trained us up for war. Now, will this be for everybody? No, probably not. But again, even in the midst of this discussion we're having on this, this subject, this topic, it should not take away your shalom. This is one of the greatest things Jesus gave us was shalom or peace beyond human understanding. So if you've been misplaced or replaced from that shalom, then there's something fundamentally wrong with your walk with God versus those who do not lose their peace in light of this conversation or this topic. When you have a mind for war, you realize it's all on a line. And the sacrifice has been made, yes, but doesn't mean we don't make the sacrifice ourselves. The scriptures are pretty clear on that. Let's move on. <clears throat> My dad, a little background here, he fought against the Nazis. I know all about the war only from his point of view, his experiences, and the things he saw, the things he experienced. And much he kept to himself because it is a dark path we go on, especially against things that are evil. And clearly the Nazis were evil. I don't know what people think otherwise, but if you want to be evil, well, that's that's your choice. But again, this is God's time now. This is, this is not going to play well for evil people. Get used to that idea. 
So my dad fought against the Nazis. Me, I had a little more colorful life. I fought against communism and also what you call today the deep state, what we call the satanic order back in the day. So I've been fighting against all these factions, all these realities, if you will, or ideologies of evil. <clears throat> so I'm no, I'm no, I don't know, I'm not new to this. After 30 plus years of this stuff, you get pretty familiar what is what. Evil is evil in God's eyes. It doesn't know what you put it called Nazis, communists, Satanists. It's evil, bottom line. You don't have to put that in any other category but evil. And yeah, we met up with Anton LaVey in Las Vegas way back before he finally died of a heart attack. But <clears throat> he's just a, he was just a face. But he wasn't the core of it. There was more other powerful entities behind the satanic order. One of the depictions up there is George Bush Sr. Yeah, we, we ran into him as well, too. And his cronies, which was larger in number than you'd be surprised. And today we see the final outcast of that circumstance, plus 30 years ago. So dealing with that reality, dealing with war, you, you get to kind of have a certain mindset. Even when you're down, you're not out. It's kind of like that. Even though the powers of oppressiveness requires a certain level of, well, we're going to cover this indignation on your part. You know, you could, it's, it's really interesting. So war has become a familiar spirit to me, or in this case, God's spirit. We could choose the form of deception or truth when it comes to things of war. When it comes to war, I'll be truthful. It's not pretty. It's not necessarily fun. But it is what it is. It's been around for thousands of years. Why should we act like it's something new? Even for those Bible types. Hmm? So stop acting like this is something is strange that you cannot find in the Bible. And the truth of the matter is, yeah, God is also a God of war. Not just of love. That's why I just address God as God. <clears throat> a mind for war. We talked about this before. In Psalm 27.3, if an army encamps against me, my heart will not fear. If war breaks out against me, even then I will keep trusting. Trusting whom? Trusting God. I love this, this quote from Thomas Paine. These are the times that try men's souls. The summer soldier and the sunshine patriot will, in this crisis, shrink from the service of his country. But he that stands it now deserves the love and thanks of man and woman. Think about that. He that stands it now. See, the circle of life has not changed. History continues to repeat itself. We are in that time when we must have a mind for war. Mind you, and I talked about this before, there is no room for people who are on the fence. You need to choose a side. You're either on the Lord's side or you're not. I mean, I can see the characteristic of people saying, well, you know, you're talking about your, you know, being on your side, Night Watchman. Well, I'm on the side of the Lord. I don't know whose side you're on. You got to make, you got to make a dis difference and a distinction, and understand the reality that this is God's time, not Satan's time. This is God's time. So, again, whose side are you on? And I love this quote from Thomas Paine. It's dead on. See, nothing is so egregious in the minds of men in war. But the reality is, on the, on the powers of righteousness, there is a necessity for change to put aside the darkness. And that is required of us. And it takes a certain character of person to fight against forces of darkness on a form of righteousness. Keep that in mind. So I suppose it would be easier to hide... You could always crawl into some corner, suck your thumb, and assume the fetal position, which I'm sure most people will. Even the scripture says how people's hearts will fail them in light of things that are come. And it's coming. I love this depiction from Home Alone. I figure it kind of says a lot about the people out there. But the bottom line is, <clears throat> this is not for little children. These are for people who have grown and mature in the ways of God and have the spirit of the living God running through them and have the mind for war. See, David was prayerfully fighting against Goliath. Samson was prayerfully fighting against the Philistines. Yes, there is times for people to stand in the gap and pray for others. I get that. But when you're standing and you stand alone, you don't have people praying for you in the gap. You are standing. 
and trusting God in the midst of it. Just as the psalm said. God is, I am the Alpha and the Omega says. It's not about me. I want to explain this. This is not about me. Nor is this about you. This is all about the living God. This time we're living in. It's not about me. It's not about my career. It's not about my future. It's not about my family. It's not about yours or anything else. This is all about the living God right now. In this time, in this history. The prophets have foretold this time. Even longing and looking forward to this time in the history of mankind. For the coming of the Lord. This is an extraordinary time. We are seeing the battle rage already between good and evil. Look how evil has been exposed and seen. And yet even those who have been brought to the attention of how evil is still follow in the footsteps of that evil. Evil comes in many levels, I guess you might say. Even the common foe could be your neighbor or your friends, even your family. For people have witnessed righteous inundation. We've seen it. Trust me, I've seen it in my own lifetime. Yes, we've seen it in Noah's time. We've seen it in Sodom and Gomorrah. Those who have seen and yet not seen, but trust in God that these things have happened and more than likely will happen again in many forms, in this case, in plain sight. In our time, 2005, the tsunami in Indonesia, that was God's indignation. Yeah, God was angry. In his indignation, he sent a tsunami into Indonesia. <clears throat> he also sent a tornado to Rowlett, Texas in 2015. I know because I witnessed that for myself. People say, oh, no, it's an act of nature. Is it? But you're considering the crimes, the criminal sins against humanity and God. It is no surprise that God has sent forth these things. And the very same thing that moved me from point A to point B. Just like it was for Lot in Sodom and Gomorrah. People choose evil. They do. Whereas people who choose good or holiness and righteousness. So this is God's indignation. Do you think it's any different as in the Old Testament as in the New? No. God is still God. He has not changed. He still sits on the throne of heaven and still is the Almighty God. There have been many more before us, you know this, who are called to pass out God's indignation. Samson, Moses, David, and the list goes on. Gideon. There have been many before us. And many after as well, too, these times. And more is yet to come. People say, well, that's for the end days. Well, we're in the end days. God has not gone away. His indignation does not change. His justice, his judgment, his love. Nothing has changed about God. Even over the centuries, the millennia, we have seen God's indignation poured out in certain countries and certain nations and certain peoples. This is not new. God is still on the throne. Wonderful, wonderful uh, song class video from Paul Wilbo, Dry Bones, which always breaks me to tears. Something you all need to look into for yourself. Paul Wilbur's dry bones. In Ezekiel 37, 4, Then he said to me, prophesied over these bones. Say to them, dry bones, hear what Adonai has to say. To these bones, Adonai Elohim says, I will make breath enter you, and you will live. I will attach ligaments to you, make flesh grow on you, cover you with skin, and put breath in you. You will live, and you will know that I am Adonai. So I prophesied as ordered, and while I was prophesying, there was a noise, a rattling sound. It was the bones coming together, each bone in its proper place. As I watched, ligaments grew on them. Flesh appeared, and skin covered them. But there was no breath in them. Next he said to me, prophesy to the breath, prophesy human being, say to the breath that Adonai Elohim says, come from the four winds, breathe, and breathe on these slain so that they can live. God is raising up an army. He's raising up an army. A war, an army for war. A raw army of worshipers. You could be that person or persons. God does not need many. He's not a God of sin, strength and number. He's a God of holiness and a God of righteousness. A God of indignation 
and a God of war. Keep that in mind. Again, Paul Wilder, Dry Bones. Great video, great song. Always brings me to tears. So prepare to witness God's indignation. This is Time of the Night, Watchmen. Time of the Night, Watch Time. Commentary, information, Bible, prophecy, stuff. See ya. Don't want to be ya. And remember, there is only one way, one truth, and one life. In Jesus' name, amen.